Hello friends, so what we're going to do today is go over uh, the Project Euler, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, the Project Euler problem number four, uh, and this one's a lot uh, more confusing than the last couple that we've done, so they're kind of like stepping up in complexity, and there's a lot of good things to learn from this, uh, so... Yeah, just follow along. At first, the code is very unintuitive, but what I'll do is I'll write it out, and then I'll kind of explain as I go as best I can, and then at the end, I'll just walk through the code and uh, take a look at it. So basically, here's the problem. A palindromic number reads the same both ways. The largest palindrome made from the product of two two-digit numbers is 9,009, and that is the product of 91 and 99. Find the largest palindrome made from the product of two three-digit numbers. Okay, so when reading the problem, the first thing that you see is that um, you're going to need three digits. So you'll need a way to put in the digits. So let's just start writing this out. So let's make a function. Ooh, if I could type. And we'll call it largest pal for palindrome. And we'll pass in the digits as an argument. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to need to set up several variables, um, and I'll explain what they are as we go. Um, and let's set that equal to zero. So we're just declaring an i, a max, a min, a d, an inferior, a superior, a limit, and then we're actually setting number equal to zero. So um, these are just declared. This one's actually set. So let's do a for loop. The first thing that we need to do is get the since it's going to be the largest three-digit numbers, we need to get a range that we can multiply between. So like 900 and 999 is the largest three-digit number. 99 is the largest two-digit number. So if we have the largest two-digit number as our lower, our inferior range, and then we have 999 as our superior range, uh, that would be a good way to go. So the way that we do that is we just set up a for loop, and we'll go i equals... Uh, one and for i less than digits, the digits that we passed in, we'll go i plus one on each iteration. Okay, so once we have that set up, we can go ahead and put our code. Number is going to equal ten times number plus nine. Remember, we we're doing nine hundred and ninety-nine or ninety-nine. It's always going to be a nine at the end, basically. Uh, after we have that set up, we'll do our, inferi our inferior is going to equal number, and then our superior is going to equal uh, 10 times number plus 9. So if you look at that, this is basically going to be, if we pass in a 3 right here, this will be 99, and this will be 999. Okay. So we have a range. Now we need to make a function to determine if something is in fact a palindrome. So let's just go is pal. We'll pass in n as an argument, and then we'll set up some more variables in this execution context. We'll go p equals zero, um, and then we'll go q equals n, and then we'll just have an r. So these two are set, and this one's just declared, which is cool. So let's do a while loop. Let's go while n is greater than zero, what we want to do is have the r equal n mod 10, and then have the p equal 10 times, oops, 10 times p plus r, which is going to be the remainder. So we're getting the remainder right here, then we're adding it here times 10. Then we'll have n equals, we'll change n to equal math dot floor n divided by 10. Okay, and here what we're going to want to do is return p is equal to q if it is. Okay, so what's going on right here, and this is fairly confusing as well, is right here, so this line will take the remainder of n mod 10. Let's go into node real quick, actually. 
Let me bump this up in size. So if you have, uh, right here it says r equals n mod 10. So let's just say that we had a number like uh, 19. And let's mod that by 10. Then what it's going to do is give us the last term. It will divide because it's a 10 base number system. So if you do mod 10, it's always going to give you the last number. So if you have that, and you go mod 10, it's always going to give you the last number, which is 9. Uh, because in a base in a 10 base number system everything will equal out except the last the last number so if you have this and the 8 is at the end if you do that mod 10 it's going to give you 8 so it always, so this is returning the last number right here in this line so it's the last number in n so then what we do here is we go uh, 10 times p plus r p is set at 0 at first so 10 times 0 is 0, plus r, so that will just return the last number that we had. So now the number, if we had like 19, it would just, this p would be set to 9. Because on this first iteration, p is 0, so 10 times 0 plus r is just going to give us that last number. Then n is going to be math.floor n divided by 10. So any number that you take like that, you divide it by 10, what it's going to do Oh yeah, you have to do like so. A var a equals math dot floor, um, and we'll just take a number divided by ten, and what you'll see is that it it also takes off the last number. So what we have done what we have done here in this first iteration is so we've taken the last number from n. We have then put that last number into p and then we have taken the last number off of n again but this time n is actually changed it is equal to that last number being gone so now n is one number less and that number is now just sitting on its own in p so then as we run through the loop it just recursively does this until n is great while n is greater than zero when n gets to be equal to zero, it will stop doing it. So basically, if you had a number like one, four, three, or let's just say you had a number like one, two, three, four, it would run through this. It would take the first, it would take the last number, put it in p. So it would give you that four. Then it would then n would change. It would be one less number, and then it would increment. P would increment to the number that was here. So forty. Uh, then we would take the last number again, which would be this three. And then since since p would be 4 right now, it would be p equals 10 times 4 plus r. So 10 times 4 is 40 plus r. The r that we took was this 3 right here. So 40 times, uh, so 40 plus 3 is 4, 3. And you see what's happening. Now we have these last two have been changed. Now it's 4, 3. And it would do it again. It would give us the 2. Do it again. It would give us the 1. So we're basically reversing this number. And then, since the number is set to n, uh, q is set to the original number right here at the bottom, we can just go p is equal to q because p is the new number. p is equal to q, and it will give us a true or a false as to whether that is that uh, passes that test. So that's something. Okay, cool. So we have a method to see if we have a palindrome. Okay, so what we need to do now is set up a range to utilize the numbers that we made the inferior and the superior variables which is 999 and 99 we need to figure out a way to decrement down and find two products that are three digits long that would come up with a palindrome so let's make a for loop let's go max equals superior times superior and then let's go min equals inferior times inferior and then we'll go while max is greater than min. What we want to do is take max and take one away from it, decrement it each time. So now that we have that, what we want to do first is just check for a palindrome. So we'll go if uh, is pal, we'll invoke that function and then we'll pass in max. If pal max, we want to set another, that limit variable that we declared up here. We would, we want to set it down here. So we'll go limit equals math dot seal. 
math.sqrt max. And then we want to set d, which is another variable we set up at the top, equal to superior. Right? Okay. So now that we have all that set, we can do a while loop and we can say while d is greater than or equal to limit, we want to check to see if max, which is the number, mod d is equal to zero and if max divided by d is greater than our inferior number. And I'm about to explain all this is. If that is true, we don't want to return max because that is the number that we were looking for. And if that is not true, we want to decrement d by one until we find that. And uh, da -da 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 -da. return not a number if none of that works. Um, that's not going to work. It has to be capitalized. Okay. So what is this doing? Because this is the most probably the most confusing part of this code. So if you have max, which is 99, you want to say 99 times 99. That is the largest three-digit number that you could get is 999 times 999. And we'll set that equal to the variable of max. So we have a maximum number of 999 times 999. Then we have a minimum variable of inferior times inferior. 99 times 99 is the largest two-digit number product of two two-digit numbers. So our range is from the largest product of two three-digit numbers and the largest product of two two-digit numbers at the top and bottom. So max is 99 times 99, min is 99 times 99. So as long as max is greater than min, we want to start at max, which is 999 times 999, and start working our way backwards by one. We'll check the first one and we'll go, is the first product a palindrome? If it, if it, it, it probably not, but if it is, then it'll run this code. If it's not, it's gonna, it's just gonna keep decrementing until this passes. So let's say that we run across a number that is a palindrome. So if is palindrome max, then it will say, okay, if that number is a palindrome within our range, then we'll set a limit to be math.seal math.square root of max. So basically the square root of max. So the the number that we have found will set up the square root of it and it will be our limit because we're gonna decrement further. And then we'll set D equal to superior up here. So that D will equal 999. So D is equal to 99, and then we have a limit of the square root of the max number that we're looking for. So then we set up a while loop. While D is greater than or equal to the limit, what we want to do is check to see if max, which is the number that we're checking, mod D is equal to zero, and if max divided by D is greater than our inferior number so if it's within our range this is saying is the number that you multiply by max to get the palindrome is that uh, I'm sorry the number that you multiply by D to get the palindrome is that above a two-digit uh, number so is it above inferior because inferior is 99 so it has to be above it has to be above that to be a three-digit number so when both of these tests pass we'll return max and if it doesn't pass, then we'll just decrement D by 1 and check it again until it does pass. And if none of this passes, we'll just return not a num. So let's console.log. And I hope all this works because I totally didn't write any tests. Largest pal. And then we'll pass in. We want the largest palindrome for three digit numbers. So we pass in a 3 as our digits right there. And then we'll log it. Now let's go to node. Let's get out of this. Um, and then let's go node. Uh, what's the name of that file? Palin.js. Okay, cool. It friggin' worked. So 906,609 is the largest palindrome of the product of two three digit numbers. Now, this code that we just walked through, it's fairly confusing. There's a lot of different variables and a lot of uh, changing of variables and, and you, it, it takes a while to walk through it. So if, you, if this is your first time going through this, 
just go through line by line. Go into Node. If you're confused by line 16, go into Node and just run it by itself. See what math.floor does versus math.ceiling versus math.square root. This part is the most challenging, I feel, of this entire uh, little piece of code. So I spent, when I the first time I did this, I spent like two hours just on this, walking through each line, making sure I knew what the logic was. Because if you understand the understanding logic, then you can, you can do this a million different ways. This is just one of many ways to do it. But if you understand the logic, it gives you the tools to be able to face a little bit uh, challenging problems like this and to come up with your own solutions. So yeah, I hope that helped. Uh, take it easy.